stay there. Take a look. Welcome to Godforsaken Hellhole. Not much to look at, but it's all mine. <laughs> Name's Paladin Bale. What do you need, civilian? I can see you're trying to appeal to my good nature. Pity for you I don't have one. I'll give you this one for free. We use our big guns to kill big super mutants, so people like you can sleep at night. Of course. But you'd have to secure the permission of Elder Lions and, well, I just don't see that happening. So move along. You're standing in front of the Citadel, headquarters to the Brotherhood of Steel, Capital Wasteland Detachment. Negative. No super mutants, civilians, or traveling salesmen allowed. Which are you? Yeah, the city ruins are crawling with them. They've pretty much overrun all of old DC. Do yourself and us a favor and stay as far away from there as humanly possible. Definitely no place for civilians. Of course. Never mind. You need a drink. Cherry, I'm thirsty over here. Ha <laughs> ha! They're my party girls. I'm too much man for just one woman, so I need two. <laughs> I wear them out every night. Why should they bother getting dressed when I'm just going to take it off? <laughs> Hey, watch your language, clown shoes. I don't pay them. They take care of me, so I take care of them. We rub each other wrong all night long. <laughs> Help yourself, clown shoes. Grab one from the liquor cabinet. 
I never trust anyone without a drink in their hand. Of course, I never trust one that does either! <laughs> Eating, drinking, farting, and screwing! <laughs> Out here, nobody bothers me. I can do whatever I like to whoever I want. You need to drink more! <laughs> Well, hi, sweetie. I'm Cherry. What can I do for you? Dukov likes to keep it hot. Ain't no need for nothing else. He's a lecherous old man. The only reason I put up with him and his needs is because I'm safe here. He tends to shoot first and ask questions later. Don't pull out a weapon near him. He's likely to shoot you. And he's really good. No sweat. It's, well, it's Dukov's place. He lives here. Pretty much, he just does a lot of drinking and partying. Bye. Hi. Oh my. Aren't you a stud? I'm Fantasia. If you need something, just let me know. He gives me some caps, but it's not what you think. He can be a nice guy. And when the lights go out, he's real fun. He's all right. He can be a real fun guy, but he sure knows how to wear a girl out. Most of all, I'm safe here. I wouldn't pull out a weapon, even just to show him. He gets kind of paranoid about that. Don't get in a shooting match with him. He's really good. Damn straight. Bye. Oh, this is Oh my god! I thought I was dead! You saved me! They dropped this stuff. Why don't you take it? It's all I have. You'd know best, wouldn't you? I have to go. Again. 
Thank you. Ah, fellow student on the path of the wasteland. Welcome to my humble caravan. Please relax, for we are in a place of safety. The type of safety that can only be ensured by an abundance of weaponry, both wicked and awesome, all of which can be yours for the right price. See, the world's a dangerous and unbalanced place. So I realized the only way to bring peace was to make sure that everyone could be dangerous. So, with a little bit of help from the mayor of Canterbury Commons, I set up this caravan. I can't give the weapons away for free, but I come close. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Dr. Lee, eh? Well, then I guess you'd have to ask Dr. Lee for more information. Go on up then. She's probably in the science lab. But keep your nose clean, you hear me? Carry on then. I'm on duty. Make it quick. Yeah, see ya. Well, this here is Flack and Shrapnel's gun shop. Pretty catchy, huh? Take a look around. If you see anything you like, I'll be right over here. Here, in Rivet City? I'm packing, and most of the rest of these guys are packing. Not to mention security. Try the muddy rudder. They don't ask too many questions down on the lower deck. Welcome to Potomac Attire. Welcome to Potomac Attire. I am Bannon, proprietor and city council member. I carry discriminating attire for discriminating customers. Straight to the point. I like that. Dr. Lee, Chief Harkness, and I are all on the council. We meet every Monday morning. I can be very influential, if you know what I mean. Far more than Seagrave Holmes. A threat? No, of course not. Well, maybe. He wants to replace me on the council. He's a shady character, I just can't prove it. Now, if someone were to find something incriminating in his room... Well, let's just say I would be very appreciative. It's a place to live, safe from raiders and super mutants. With Dr. Lee on our side, maybe we can even begin to rebuild the world. Come back soon. This is a quick fix. I mean, that's the name of our shop. Polly and mine, that is. My name is Cindy. Cindy Cantelli. We've got all kinds of chems. Have a seat. Yeah? We're the lucky ones. We don't have to fight just to survive. We have normal jobs. I clean the halls. It might not look like it, but you should have seen it before. Goodbye. Anywhere, someone will be with you. Let me introduce myself. I am Gary Staley, gourmet chef and gourmand. I'll be preparing your meal. My specialty is Meyer Lurk cakes, although the iguana is very popular too.
then you are in for a treat. Thank you for coming to Gary's Galley. This place could use a few more people willing to work. I'm Everything is falling to apart. And I'm the only one willing to fix it. To work. Those halls won't clean themselves. Hi, I'm Angela. My dad runs Gary's Galley. If you want anything to eat, talk to him. Dad and I have had a rough time, but we're getting by. She's not very social. Stays in her lab in the stern. She's smart, though. Real smart. It's noisy, dark, and smelly. But we're safe here. No super mutants or raiders. And maybe Dr. Lee will find a way to get clean water for us. You mean like hitting on me? No. Most of them are polite. Even the ones like Diego that I'd want to flirt with seem to ignore me. Well, one of us is. Sometimes it seems like he doesn't even know I'm there. Especially if he is a priest with a thick skull. Well, I'm not giving up. I just know we're made for each other. Bye. Yeah? What do you want? Yeah, that's James. My own little troublemaking brat. I'd sell him to you if they'd let me. Unless you've got any more personal questions, I'm busy. Hey. What do you want? My mom is probably drunk, and my dad's dead. Is that good enough for you, asshole? Who are you? Got any psycho? I could really use a fix, but I'm broke. <laughs> I run the chem shop, but I'm broke and can't buy chems. That's what Cindy says too, but I got the itch. I need it bad. Yeah, me too. That... Secure for a reason. Ted Strayer, you can chill with me if you want, dude. All right, you and me just hanging. Later, dude. Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. Yes, yes, yes. But Dr. Lee... Dr. Lee is trying to see... I'm Janice Kaplinsky, chief botanist. What do you need? I did see a man talking to Dr. Lee, but I really shouldn't be discussing it. She's already in a bad mood. I'd hate to make it worse. You should probably just talk to her about it. So long. Save lives. Please excuse me. There is much work to be done. I help Dr. Lee when she needs equipment moved. I am no scientist. I just help with the heavy things. And your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts. Now please, stand aside. I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating, but if you only knew what I'm busy, I've got a lot of repairs to make. What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. 
Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. What do you need? Look, some of us are trying to get work done here. There have been enough disruptions recently. Anybody coming through here would have to talk to Dr. Lee. Why don't you go bother her about it? Yeah, see you. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? You were too young to remember, and I suppose James never spoke of me. Typical. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your parents many years ago. Now I run the science lab here in Rivet City. It was all I had left. When your mother died, your father decided to leave with you. He abandoned our work. We had no choice but to do the same. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... Until your mother died, and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, uh, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Yes, your mother was, well, she was a good woman, a very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe. But I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time, and wants to try again. Okay. What? Well, I... I'm not sure what there is to tell. Your father and I, we worked together for a long time. I, I think we were really on to something. But then there were complications. The project was abandoned and your father disappeared. I returned here to Rivet City and established the lab you see before you now. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? It was simple, really. Fresh, clean water for everyone. Such a simple idea and yet so impossible to realize. The plan was to build a facility that could purify all the water in the tidal basin at once. No radiation, no muck, just clear water. It just turned out to be more difficult than we anticipated. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. You happened. It wasn't just you. We had more problems than we could handle already, but your birth is what finally pushed it over the edge. Your father decided that you were more important than everything we'd been working for, and he left. He left all of us. Once he was gone, the Brotherhood decided we weren't worth their time anymore. Without their protection, we had to abandon the purifier. Okay. This is the Rivet City Science Lab. It's taken many long years to put together, but we've done well for ourselves. Our work on portable fusion power and hydroponics are coming along quite nicely, if not quite according to schedule. 
Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. What do you want to know? Okay. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I suppose I can spare a few stim packs. It's not much, but it might make things easier for you. Good luck finding your father. Yeah. 